Okay. All right. Hello again. <clears throat> this is Mike Kelly from animatorsforum.com. And hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm trying to do this on my Mac um, because the Mac has built-in screen recording, unlike my PC. Also, because I'm doing this on the Mac, uh, this, uh, this may be a little more awkward for me. I'm not exactly as familiar with the special function keys. Uh, the mouse operates a little squirrely on my MacBook Air than it does on my PC. I'm not really a Mac kind of guy, more of a PC guy, so bear with me on this. But uh, anyway, so what I'm going to demonstrate today is my auto rig uh, script program, or script, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a programmed approach to generating an automatic rigging. And uh, first of all, you'll see on the screen, we see uh, our character. We've drawn our character, as you can see, and now we're all ready to animate, right? Now, that's, of course, we can't animate. Uh, while it's easy enough to draw in Anime Studio, it's very easy to draw, obviously, that's not even half the job. Once you've drawn your character, you've got to rig it in order to be able to animate it. And this can range from extremely simple to uh, very, very complicated, depending upon uh, how you rig your characters. And uh, in the old days, or when Anime Studio first started off, you just had the bone weights ability to, uh, to rig, and then they added uh, assigning points to bones. And they, they, they've gradually evolved the process until now, I believe, in my humble opinion, we have the, uh, probably the best way of rigging at all, and that's the use of smart bones. But along the way, the rigging process has gotten more complicated. So in order to get it done uh, to my satisfaction, I, uh, I have to do a rather laborious sort of rigging, which kind of takes the joy out of it for me. And I should stop before I go any further. If you guys like to rig, if you enjoy the process of rigging, don't, just turn off the video and don't pay any more attention to this because... Uh, I, I absolutely hate it. I understand there are people that like a lot of things that I hate. There are people that like watching baseball. I don't like watching baseball. I, I understand that. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, rigging, when I first started off, was, uh, was kind of fun. It's kind of interesting, as most things are. Uh, uh, over time, as I kept doing it more and more, I got more tired of it. It became more tiresome. And now that I've done literally hundreds of characters and, and have to do still hundreds more, I'm, I'm sick and tired of it and hate the process. And, and I'm always looking to try to automate things that I don't have to do otherwise. And a lot of the ringing process, for my cases, can be automated. Now, second thing I want to talk about is, uh, I, I use smart bones, I, I told you. I, I would also use a, a specific kind of rig. And this is only going to be my style of rigging. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will have any relevance at all to what you're doing, other than the, the concepts of automating the process will be relevant, I believe. And so for that purpose alone, I think it'd be interesting to, to look at. Uh, but if not, once again, you don't have to watch this. So uh, anyway, we have, a, we have a character. As you notice, I'm using a half-naked woman because most of you people out there that are animators are male, and this will keep your attention. No, actually, seriously, the reason, the reason I'm using this is uh, just like in real life, Clothes hide a wide variety of sins, and if you can do a halfway decent rig with, with uh, somebody who isn't wearing many, many clothes, then trust me, on a character that's fully clothed, it'll be a lot easier to rig. So, so I started off with, uh, with this process, and here's how I draw my character. If we, if we go over here, you can look at the layers. I've got this head. This particular head was generated automatically from my No Limits uh, creator. It took me two seconds to press a, press a couple of tab keys until I found a head I liked. Uh, so that process was automatic. And uh, then I drew the, uh, let me turn off some of these layers so you can see what I've done here. I drew the torso. So there's a torso. That's all there is to it. It's just on that one layer. You can see these are all vector layers here. I drew the downstage arm on top of that. And you'll notice there's no hands. That's because I use a switch layer hands. And I'll show you how that process works. Uh, then I drew a downstage leg. And there's no foot on there, but then I drew the downstage foot there. And then the same process for the upstage arm uh, and the upstage leg and the upstage foot. Now, uh, because I work in three-quarter view, this is, this is how I work. Normally, I draw the torso, generate an automatic head, or, or might change it a little around a little bit, and draw one arm, and then I duplicate it and, and kind of uh, reverse the process so it's kind of uh, the opposite arm, and then raise it up a little higher, as you can see. Same thing for the leg. 
uh, although I don't reverse the leg because the legs are both pointing out in the same direction. And, uh, and that's it, and the feet. So there's my basic rig, uh, basic, I'm sorry, basic uh, drawing of the character. And now I'm going to go down here to, I've got this little auto, auto rig character limbs, as you can see, little auto icon. Go construct rig, and I'm going to call her Meg. Okay. And on my MacBook Air, it takes a little longer than it does on the PC. It, uh, on the PC, it's pretty, it's pretty quick. But on the MacBook Air, it takes, it takes a touch longer. Uh, and there we go. And so we've all uh, we've generated the rig. That's basically it. The first thing you can see immediately is that it's generated the number of bones automatically uh, placed in here. Uh, the first thing you might notice with these bones is that uh, some of them are slightly uh, aligned. Uh, misalign, I don't know misalign is the right word, but they're not exactly where I would put them. Uh, I actually have a newer version of this where I'm experimenting to getting this more precisely aligned. They're actually precisely aligned where I need them precisely aligned, which is in the middle of the limbs, but uh, at these extremities they're not as aligned correctly, so I, I, sometimes I have to make a, a minor adjustments. Um, but I'm working on, on fixing that. I, I wanted to show you this before I get too far, because I'm getting to the point now where I don't want to program anymore, and I, I realize how that goes with my own feelings. So uh, I, I got to get this out there, at least um, at least exposed to people. Anyway, so uh, so there's the bones, and it's all rigged up. And uh, you might notice that uh, the hands now are in there. They've been put in automatically. I have hand switch layers, so they've been not only have they been put in, but they've also been adjusted automatically to match up to her arms and where they belong. And uh, also, if we look at the limbs, we'll go here and look at this limb in particular, there is a forearm part of this limb. Let me turn this off so you can see. There's a forearm, see? And then there's a bicep part. And uh, the reason it's split is, I'm going to show you that in a second, but, I, but I, have to, I have to split it due to the way I'm rigging it anyway, and I put it on two different layers and sandwich the hand in between because I have to do that. But look how much easier this was. I drew the, the limb all in one piece, and then my rigging process automatically split it properly. Uh, the same goes for the leg, although the leg is, is on one, la on one uh, layer, it's still also split. So you can see that there's two different pieces. There's a thigh, and uh, actually there's three different pieces on the leg. There's a thigh and the calf, and there's also the foot now, which has been incorporated into the leg layer. So that did all that splitting automatically and combining it. So, so now, if I go someplace here, make this mouse work on the Mac, and, uh, and now I go to rotate the bones, the, the pieces that have been assigned to these, uh, to these places, to these uh, parts, will move properly here. And um, same for the arms. But she's all been, been correctly, correctly rigged. Now, one thing we, we would notice here I uh, hope you notice. Know I'm sure you will, particularly after I render this out. I'm going to render a test frame so you can see uh, some of the issues still that remain. Um, so anyway, those are all assigned properly, and the points are assigned for all of the, um, the different limb processes. But notice as I move this, there's a little... Well, let's see if I, I got to be careful about zooming in. This mouse is very sensitive on the Mac. Uh, you can see that there's a there's a schism here between her arm as I rotate this. It's okay when it's down there, but it doesn't it doesn't work up there. The same thing is true as as this arm piece moves in front. There's a little tiny bit there that needs to be adjusted. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I'm always going to have a little bit of adjustment, and that's what smart bones are all about. That's as I move this through the full range of motion, and you can see that the uh, that the constraints are already in for all these. So. It's, it's already set the proper constraints for each of the parts, and the constraints are different for each part. Oh, and by the way, this should show you why I have to have the hand sandwiched. The hand has to go in front as well as in, in, uh, in sandwich behind that forearm. So it has to go in front of the bicep, but in, in back of the forearm in order to work properly. So that's why, uh, because I like to be able to do that. So, uh, anyway, these little pieces need to be adjusted, and for that purpose, I, I need smart bones. Well, as part of the rigging process, uh, it also generated, um, and I didn't actually show you this, I probably should have shown you this first, but there, there weren't any actions in this file, trust me. You just have to believe me, I'll, I'll show you on the next one. There weren't any actions. All these actions were generated automatically. So 
in addition to the constraints put in, all the actions were generated. So when I need to uh, adjust, for example, the downstage forearm, I can go to that action, and the action not only is, is created automatically, but it also has the keys for that, uh, for that bone. And the way I do my, my smart bones is I only have one bone that does both positions, both forward and back. So this, this does the, uh, that way I don't have to worry about it. And at the rest position, at the middle position, if I go to uh, the forearm, which is what that bone controls, you'll see it also has placed keys in for all the points that are on that layer. So I don't have to worry about that, and I can go adjust the points now. It, it's not only keyed it for the, for the point position, but also the curvature and the width, okay? So all that's done for me. So really all that remains at this point is to go into each of those uh, smart bones and do the final adjustments. And when I, when I do that finally, then I will have a uh, character that doesn't have all these tiny little disconnects. But still, given all, that's, uh, that's pretty uh, good in terms of rendering. You notice how the hands all of that lined up. So here we go. One more, I'm gonna show you one more here. Um, and let's see, we'll go here to a new file. I'll open up the coach. And coach is, the reason I wanted to show you a different file, coach, is because uh, his proportions are a lot different. You notice he's got very short little legs. I drew him very comically. I wanted him to look kind of dumb and stupid. So he's got little short shorts and little short little legs and, and big long arms and a big torso. So uh, if I run my uh, construct rig on this and change the name to coach or whatever, um, the other thing you might have seen is as it generates all these different parts and the, and the bones in the, in the process, the, the other thing it does is it automatically puts it all under one group layer of the name of the character. That's because when I'm animating, I like to have all my characters like this. I don't want to see all the different layers. I just want to see their, uh, their names up there. And my, my smart keys take care of switching layers for me, so I don't actually ever have to switch layers. So one of the other things you might have uh, noticed now is notice that the hands here are much larger, but they've automatically been come in and, and adjusting themselves to the limbs here. And uh, we go to the bones. You'll see that the bones themselves, once again, I need to align this up just a little bit better, but I'm, I'm going to get this. I'm going to do that other thing. It bothers me enough that I might go ahead and still do it. Uh, programming never ends. Ask Wes. It just, it's just a never-ending process. But um, in any case, that's a, that's a minor adjustment. So. If I go then to a, to a frame here and then uh, uh, move, move this guy out here and move uh, his arm up here, something like that, this arm around here, and his stubby little leg, move back here. This, this guy just looks silly. And basically, that's what it looks like. So, and you can see I still have some things I need to do. As I, the smart bone goes, I'm going to move this line back here and uh, adjust these two. But anyway, that's basically it. So, so that's my auto rig process. Now, one more thing I want to talk about briefly before we leave this is uh, some of you that are watching this might have said to yourself, "Well, is this?" This is something like Character Studio, maybe, except without the ability to actually automatically generate things. Um, Character Studio, you can actually put your own artwork, but you are constrained very... Uh, you can't put all your own artwork, and I don't remember what you can do and what you can't. I don't remember if it's what parts you can't or can't put in, but there are certain restrictions on what parts you can, you can use. Plus, you have to follow very limited guidelines for those parts. In, in other words, Character Studio makes you match the artwork to the rigging. This process here matches the rigging to the artwork so that the rigging automatically adjusts itself based on the size of the artwork. Uh, to me, this is really what the core of Character Studio should have been rather than, than the way it is, but that's just me. So anyway, hopefully this has interested you and, and provided you with some uh, things to think about, and we can discuss this more on animatorsforum.com, and thanks for listening. Bye.